It is Wednesday, May 18th in the MLB, and I'm Austin from Calling Our Shot. And I'm Logan from Calling Our Shot. And we are back with our best picks. We got our favorite run line, a player prop, and a no-run first inning coming your guys' way. You already know. Hit that subscribe button, especially if you guys are new. Austin and I put a lot of hard work into these picks videos. We've been on an insane little little run, make, making you guys some money. That's what we're trying to do. So if this sounds like something you want to do, hit that subscribe button. Also, drop a like if we've been making you some money. I have a feeling we have been, Austin. Yeah, because we've had not one, not two, not three, not four. Five straight winning days, a 2-0 day yesterday. Technically, you could bring out the brooms. We like to save those for a 3-0 day, but Braves money line. I got my... My Acuna Jr. jersey yes. on right now. We're rocking with them. We'll be talking about the Braves game in a little bit. This Mariners Blue Jays Nerfy, pretty no sweat bet for that one. Only a runner on first, I believe, with like two outs on. So no worry about that. And then of course Longoria, like like we kind of predicted, Longoria does not play. You hate to see it. It was a void. He did end up coming up with like I think in the seventh inning pinch hit. It was 0 for one. He struck out in that one. I bet you he goes under today. I think it's plus value, but that won't be my player prop. We wanted that 3-0 sweep, but we'll take a 2 0 one. We have five straight winning days. Hopefully, we've been helping you guys make some money. If we have, consider becoming a COS All Star. We appreciate all those All Stars out there. You guys are the real MVPs. We can't do it without all the All Stars. Look, we can't do it. If a lot of people do these free picks on YouTube, some people might charge you some money for these free picks. We're doing them all for free. So if you want to become a little bit of All Star, show us a little bit of love. It only costs two dollars ninety nine cents a month. Click that join button on the channel. We have a couple new All Stars. We have VMAC. We got Harold. We have Patrick. We got Devin, we got Casina 17, and we got Jake joining the all-star group. You guys, we appreciate you guys as always. You guys are you guys are holding it down for the COS Army. We appreciate you guys. Our final note, our parlay of the day, live on Odds Jam. Yesterday, it was a brutal one. We had two legs, and the Yankee Rays was an easy no sweat. Yankees, thanks for nothing to roll this Chapman, sell on the run line for us. But my final note. Today is my fiance's birthday. So show Trina some love in the comments. She would certainly love to see it. She was one of our first. I think she was actually our first ever COS All-Star. So she's the real MVP. It's her birthday today. Go show her some love in the comments section. But without further ado, Logan, I'm throwing it to you. First play of the day. And I know you got a spicy one today. I've got I've got a spicy one. I said yesterday was a heat check with Braves money line. We cashed an underdog money line. So what, what left is there for, for me to go after? I want to go after a high value run line. Taking the Phillies minus one and a half versus the Padres currently plus one forty odds on Barstool Sportsbook. Yeah, so this is this is a whale, right? If we could cash a you know a one point four unit, I would love that. Yesterday, Padres won three to nothing. Very uninspiring performance from the Phillies. You know that they, they their offense just could not get anything going, and Eflin pitched okay, but they just didn't win. And so I I feel like a lot of people are kind of seeing that, you know, 84% of the money and 64% of the spread at the time I'm recording this video is on the Padres. That's where I want it to be. I want everybody to believe in the Padres today. And I want the Phillies to be playing at home, which they are, and to just, you know, steal a game that that people aren't going to see coming, especially because my boy Blake Snell is making his first start of 2022 due to injury. If you guys were with me all last year, you know I loved picking against Blake Snell. It was just one of my it was one of my niche things, right? Blake Snell, 6.12 road ERA in 2021. He was definitely, you know, a, a not a great road pitcher. He was one of those pitchers that I liked to like to fade on the road. And here he is making his first start of the year on the road. That's a lot of pressure, right? Coming off of an injury, how is he going to perform? Is he just going to come out, you know, cooking cooking with grease? I don't I don't know. Right. I don't, I don't know, but I do know that the Phillies are batting 259 versus left handed pitchers. So pretty solid on, on the year. And also one of my favorite stats, I, I think I pulled it up the past few days. The Phillies are batting 303 on batting average and balls in play at second best in the major leagues. What does that mean? Well, it means just putting the ball in play, getting runners on, on base, not, not necessarily relying so much on, on the home run. So, you know, it, it's a lost art these days to, to put the ball in play and just put some pressure on the opposing pitcher. I think the Phillies are uh, offense is definitely equipped to do so. I pulled some of the batting averages versus Blake Snell. Long story short, I haven't seen him a lot, right? Real Muto only 333 versus Snell. Castellanos, Hoskins, and Bohm all, all have, you know, they haven't hit him, but they've also only seen him like two times or something. So they're, they're, they're going to get some more plate appearances today, and they're hopefully going to get some opportunities. Now the elephant in the room is, you know, Bryce Harper not being in the lineup. He's, you know, he's, he's injured. So he won't be out there. We're going to need big performances from Castellanos, Hoskins, and Bohm, and even Real Muto. In, in this one for it to cash. The Phillies do hit better at home, so I, I like to see that. But what I'm also relying on is the Philly starting pitcher to keep to keep those Padres bats, you know, at bay. Zach Wheeler, 3-0 and 0 in runs. 
in each of his last three starts. So I love to see the zeros. And he's coming in with a 1.93 home ERA. Pretty solid on the on the year at home under under two ERA. I will absolutely take that. These Padres hitters also, you know, kind of the same narrative versus Snell. They haven't seen Wheeler a bunch, right? Profar 333, Machado 200 versus Wheeler. If you're looking at everybody else, they they haven't really seen him. So we need to get out Jerickson Profar. He's he's one of the better hitters. You know, Machado, he's hit or miss. I'm okay. I'm okay with taking my chances versus Machado in this Padres lineup. Last time I did pick up against the Padres, I lost because of a you know a meltdown from the Braves bullpen. Now, is a Phillies bullpen meltdown, you know, in the cards? It could be. But you know what? Scare money don't make money. I've said it, you know, yesterday. I'll say it again today. Philly's 27th in bullpen ERA. Padres 20th in bullpen ERA. It's not like the Padres are, are you know, amazing in bullpen ERA either, right? There could be some run opportunities there. In order to cast this, cash this one, we're going to need Blake Snell to get rocked. The potential's always there, let me tell you. If you've bet against Blake Snell, you know, you know. But and we also need the Phillies bullpen to hold down the fort a little bit. But a plus 140 value, I just I simply have to pick that, especially when betting baseball for a full year. So that's what I'm riding with. Austin, you've got a player prop for us today that's not going to void. What do you got for us? If this voids, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because <laughs> I swear, I, I'm avoiding offensive players, although I bet you if Longoria comes out and goes under today, his under was plus value. But today, I love the pick for Phillies. Love the value on that one. Today, I'm going with a guy named Corbin Burns. I'm taking his over 18 and a half pitching outs, player outs, whatever you want to call it, plus 100 on Caesars. So I know some people, I know Prize Picks has this line, and we'll see. Caesars has a line this morning. DraftKings should get one. I think Fanduel will eventually get one as well. Now, if you don't have that line, I do like Corbin Burns over eight and a half strikeouts. It's high, high for a reason. We'll talk about that in a second. Also, two uh, offensive player props, Justin Turner and Gary Sanchez. Both like they're under one and a half bases. Obviously, I won't track them towards my record, but those are a couple of things that I did look at and did consider. We'll be riding with Corbin Burns over 18 and a half outs. Why is that? Now, Burns, very efficient. Uh, he's a very efficient pitcher in the league, but very efficient at home this season. His stats for home versus road are insane. The ERAs are about the same, but how he's getting it done is very different. Now, at home, a .63 whip, 13 and a half strikeouts per nine innings. Compared to on the road, only a .92 whip. That's unacceptable. And 9.36 Ks per nine. The guy's a, the guy's an ace. This is what he does. Corbin Bird's one of the best strikeout guys in the league. And Braves, well, yeah, you, you strike out the most times in the league. Like, what are you going to do? And that, I'm sorry, Braves, I'm wearing your shirt, but you guys strike out the most in the league, and that goes even up on the road, which they are on the road today in Milwaukee. Now, in three starts for Burns at home this year, he's gone 21, 20, and 21 outs, going seven innings in two of those, and then six and two-thirds in the other one. So, obviously, hitting the over in those. Now, in his other four starts, which he starts four on the road, he's gone 15, 21, 18, and 21 outs. So, it's like I, I put them in outs, but obviously, you know, those five, then six, then seven, whatever innings pitched but this we need our we're going to need him to go six innings pitched and then get us at least one more out into the seventh inning if he can go seven innings i'd love that 21 ounces is perfect for us but we've seen burns get up into that kind of echelon today now that included a start versus the same braves team in which he went six innings pitched only at 18 outs so finishing on the hook in this one we need 19 he faced 25 batters did allow six hits on only seven strikeouts i think he'll be a little bit more efficient today at home this is a Braves team that we saw yesterday. They were doing pretty well against the Braves or the Brewers bullpen. So imagine they want to keep Burns in a little bit longer today. Burns, like I said, one of the best put away pitchers in the league. When he gets two strikes, you know he's going to probably try to put you away with the strikeout. And the Braves know that. So I don't think they're going to want to get into a lot of two strike two strike uh, at bats with them. I think they're going to want to try to do a little bit of damage early. That could lead to some early swings, early pop ups, early ground outs, whatever it may be. And that might be some early one, two pitch at bats, which is exactly what we're going to need to cash this over. So I really think Burns, we, we saw them let Freddie Peralta, another Brewer starter, go seven innings pitched against them. Adrian Hauser yesterday went six innings pitched, finishing on the hook. This is Burns. He's their best pitcher. And I think he's going to get it done with a team that's swinging at a lot of not great pitches. They got a lot of runners up in that bullpen. I don't think the Brewers want to use their bullpen a ton today i think they're going to let burns kind of get it done and then they obviously have tomorrow off so i think burns will see him go over this 18 and a half outs that's what i'm riding with plus 100 not too bad two plus money plays to start the day logan get out yeah. those flags because nerfy nation has been just absolutely Let's on go. a fire tear we are 26 in 13 this year on nerfies to put that in per into perspective for every three nerfies we've, we've placed, we've cashed two of them. We aren't taking the minus 180 nerfies. No, we're not doing that. We're taking – we avoided a lot of nerfies yesterday. So props yeah. props to Logan for navigating the, the nerfy market. But today we're riding with Yankees Orioles, taking it. No run yeah. first inning, minus 122 on Barstool. Now, at surface level, people that took this nerfie yesterday, down bad. 
They're down bad in the comments, but that's okay. You can get your units back today. Now, Lyles is on the mound for the Orioles. He did nerfy already this season twice versus the Yankees. So he's been pitching pretty well and knocking on wood for this next one because he's nerfied in all seven of his starts so far this year. So let's make that eight, Lyles. We also think about the Yankees. Do have a lot of a lot of good hitters. We saw Judge, I believe, get a double yesterday, which drove in LeMayu, which was the, the run that did Yerfi. But still, Yankees 20th and first inning runs. The fact that they year feed yesterday, kind of like it that they're going to no run first inning today. And we also look at Lyles, 4.39 ERA, 1.51 whip, 14 walks and 39 innings pitch. Not catastrophic, not the best guy in the league. This guy was, you know, an, an ace. Then this this line would not be minus 122. I think he's given us some good value. They can get those three Yankees out, and then we got to go to the other side of the mound. And who's pitching for the Yankees, Logan? Yeah, their they're million-dollar man, Mr. Cole, right? Garrett Cole, 2.95 ERA, 1.12 whip, and 12 walks and six and two-thirds innings pitch this year for Garrett Cole, right? We know what Garrett Cole is. He's he's a little bit of a liability at home, pitching at home, but he's he's a better pitcher on the road, right? Also, he, you know, season-wide, he's 5-2 and two nerfing, right? His two yes-run first innings were the first two games of the season. I remember the meltdown against Boston, right? So – he he he's one of those pitchers that I, I'm telling you he's he's rounded more into shape. He was a little bit nervous out there to start the year, but he's he's rounded into that no run first inning form that we need. And guys, Baltimore tied for 29th and first inning run. Still, still, still that stat, right? You know the poor Orioles are still tied with the Tigers in, in for dead last and first inning runs. So I really do love love this one. You know another one we were looking at and potentially considering was the Rays. The Rays versus Tigers one, as I mentioned, Tigers tied for 29th and first inning runs. You love that. I didn't love the value on it, though. It was like one for the best value was minus 140. It was 160 on other books. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to get wrong there because, you know, as as we as I called yesterday, Bo Brisky, first inning run. run what he does. So he, yeah, it's, it's, it's what he does. He's, he's Yerfi Nation's favorite guy to see on the mound. Uh, but but uh, uh, for Nerfy Nation, we like to see goal, uh, We like to see Cole and Lyles on the mound today because we're going to wave those flags again. And Nerfy Nation, I'm feeling it. Feeling it yeah. again. And if Logan didn't say it, but do not take the Brewers versus Braves Nerfy. It is minus 170 on some books. Just don't yeah. play that juice on a no run first inning. It's a coin flip bet. If Max Fried or Corbett Burns gives up a run, it wouldn't surprise either of us. I would not lay the juice on that one. Take this one. Like Yankees, Orioles, minus 122. No run first inning. Ryan Corbin Burns, over 18 and a half pitching outs him. Throwing a dart. We're going Phillies, minus one and a half. Those are our three official plays. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. Our NBA video is popping up on the screen. I think I'll put our parlay up there, too, if you want to go check it out. We have a good parlay for today's uh, MLB slate. We appreciate you guys for always for tuning in. Our weekly podcast live at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Definitely check it out. We'll see you guys in the next one.